This is private. By the way, did you know what you do on the internet is not always private? In fact, it rarely is. When you get online, you get a thing called an IP address. And basically, that's a way for the network folks and the government to be able to tell where certain information was accessed from. Okay? So that means they can locate it to an office if it's wired to an internet connection. Oh, and if you think you're wireless, ha, they don't know that I'm here. They won't know who it is. Well, if it's a, you have to use a password and an ID in order to, to get in, then they're probably going to have a good idea as to where you were and who it was that was getting online. You'd be amazed at the information that can be put out there. Not to mention things like spyware that can get onto your computer as well. And that brings me to another point. MySpace, Facebook, things like that. Be careful what you put on there. It is certainly not private. It's not uncommon for employers to do a little Google search, Facebook, MySpace search for potential employees uh, before they hire them. And if you've got on your MySpace page a lot of pictures of drunken debauchery and mischievous act with cheddar cheese and a local Taco Bell, I think your chances for getting hired are going to be pretty slim, unless it has something to do with uh, naughty things with cheese and the Taco Bell. Also, when you're online, wireless, you may be thinking, well, I, you know, the only ones that can get my information is the government, maybe the IT staff, whatever, you know, connection I'm getting access to. But, you know, the real criminals can't get access to what I'm doing. And that's where you're wrong. When you're wireless, you're basically sending out your information 360, every, every direction, through walls. You don't know who's going to get your information. Because a criminal could be nearby picking up your information and finding out your bank account password. Your, what kind of websites that you're going to, all kinds of information that could get you in trouble because although there is some encryption with wireless connections, a lot of it can be easily hacked with free tools that can be found on the web and pieced together. So remember, what you do online is not always anonymous. One other big security concern is with things like flash drives. A lot of people will um, carry a flash drive around to carry all their files on. If you lose that, people could see your files, get access to your hard work and, and use it or who knows what. In an earlier episode, we talked about a free program called freesecurity.jar. It worked with Linux, Mac, Windows. It's a great choice. It's free for you. Use that to encrypt your files. And also, speaking of a flash drive, if you were to drop it or leave it plugged into a public computer, which happens a lot of the time, you might want to consider creating a text file on your flash drive that would have information uh, as to how to contact you. Because most people in the world are honest and will return it if they see some information as to whose it is, with maybe your name or your uh, email address, some way that they can get in touch with you to let you know that they found your flash drive. Well, one other thing, if you're on a public computer, if you're using a Mac, remember that Macs, you need to fully quit out of the uh, browser. If you don't quit fully out of the browser, you will uh, leave yourself vulnerable because what Macs do is when you quit out of a browser window, it doesn't fully quit you out and it will often leave you logged in to certain things like Blackboard at university websites and maybe other things that you've logged on to for uh, webmail, that sort of thing. So make sure you quit out of that. Well, remember, always do your software updates and not just for your OS. Make sure you do it for things like Microsoft Office and Photoshop, things like that to keep yourself secure. All right? Do those updates and always use good passwords. Our first question today comes from Anthony. Anthony asks, he says, I have an Intel iMac. I like to play games and there are game sites I go to that I need to download Adobe uh, Shockwave Player. When it goes to the site to download it, it does not work or something like that on an Intel Mac. You have to go and put something in Rosetta mode. I have tried this and have had no luck. Well, Anthony, you, what basically what they're trying to say is Adobe which bought Macromedia, has not made a Intel native version of the Shockwave plugin for your web browser. So as a result, it has to run things in Rosetta, which is basically the format for the older version of Mac. Rosetta is a way for you to, for it to translate the information. So that could create some problems with some of the stuff that you want to do. But the key thing you need to do is to basically set your web browser up to be able to view things for it to run in Rosetta mode instead of the native Intel mode. It's a little confusing, but I'll show you what the fix is. You go ahead and, and do this. You go ahead and go to your computer and you go to your applications folder. You scroll down to you can find your uh, Safari uh, browser or Firefox. It works with either one of these. And if you right click and do get info on that, and it pulls up this little window. And what I want to point out to you here is under this little Safari info box, there's a little checkbox that says open using Rosetta. 
and if you open using Rosetta, that should fix your problem for you. Um, now, this may slow down some of your browsing. You may run into some incompatibilities, so you may not want to do this except for this, you know, site. I would recommend choose either Firefox or Safari, whichever one you don't normally use. Use that browser and set it up to run in Rosetta. Otherwise, you're going to have to quit out, uncheck, and then relaunch again to go to the uh, gaming site that you want to go to. So in my case, I would I actually like using Safari. I might set up Firefox as my second browser for this Shockwave site, where I'd have it automatically set to open in Rosetta. But you know, it's easy enough to check and uncheck. Just mean you do have to quit completely out of your browser and then relaunch it to get it to, to open the non-Rosetta mode. So either way you go. And once you do that, then you can download and install that Shockwave plugin. It should work and you should be able to do that uh, and be able to go to your website and play all the games that you want. All right? Let me know if that doesn't work for you, Anthony. Uh, and if it does, go out and have lots of fun. All right, our second question is from Dick, and Dick says, I have a G4 Mac running 10.4. I have an audio in jack on the back of the computer, given he has a tower. I would like to use a microphone and record my voice. What kind of mic do I need? And um, also, I probably need to get an amplifier also, correct? Well, basically, here's the situation. On some of the older G4 Mac towers, some of them had an digital audio in and a lot of microphones you typically buy and plug in will not work. You'd have to have a digital microphone. I'm not sure what Apple was thinking on this. They On their later models they made it a cross-platform where it's digital and analog line in port. Although I found some plugs don't work if there's a certain length it's not quite right if they're too short or too long. So that creates problems. But, what a lot of people have been doing is buying USB mics. And if you go out on the internet and you do a little search for um, uh, USB microphones, uh, you'll find stores or go to the stores. You know, B&H Photo is one of the ones that I, I've bought a lot of stuff from in the past. And on here you just do a search and you can find a lot of USB uh, microphones that are on there. And some of these are kits where you get a lot of extra stuff as well, headphones and nice little things to hold on to your, your microphone um, so it doesn't make any bouncing noise. It doesn't pick any noises off the desk and things like that. One other thing, Dick, you might want to consider is getting a uh, box. Let me pull one up here. There's these little boxes that you can buy. It's sort of a, uh, a plug-in that you can use to a USB audio interface. So basically you plug it into your USB port and then you can plug in mics that you already own. They're one eighth inch plugs. You can just plug it directly into this and that will allow it to interface with your Mac. And this is definitely Mac compatible. So this could be another way for you to work around to accomplish what you want to do. All right, hope that helps. Um, if you have a question for Ask the Techies, send it to us at askthetechies at gmail.com and you may very well get a video reply from us. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dealey Beard for Ask the Techies. By the way, want to check out past videos that you can't find via iTunes? Check out our web address. It's much easier to find now at askthetechies.com. It'll redirect you to our information where you can find old videos, our videos sorted by category so you can learn even more.